Hello, welcome to Minute Trials. My name is Stuart and welcome to another Flames of War painting tutorial. And today's subject is a Hawker Typhoon. Now, these sadly aren't my own miniatures. They are part of a commission. Um, but I thought that it would be the perfect opportunity to record while I was doing some work and turn into a video at the same time. It's been quite a while since I painted any aircraft, at least World War II aircraft. I've painted lots of sci-fi aircraft for games like Warhammer 30k um, and I really enjoyed doing it and I've done many over the last few years. So many of those techniques are going to be absolutely transferable. The most important thing really is planning out the, the colour scheme here and not being able to make it up as I go along. First off, I've used the official studio paint job from Battlefront Miniatures as a, as a bit of a guide, and it matches the decals and things that have been sent by the client. But I've also did a little bit of extra Googling and, and have searched out another few images online just to help me match some colours, including the sort of the bottom of the aircraft, which I knew would be grey but isn't visible in the images on the Battlefront Miniature. I primed the miniature black as normal. It's a resin miniature, slightly soft but not too bad. Um, cleaned up fairly easily. So I primed it black, but I'm not going to use my um, often usual zenith or pre highlight on top. Um, I need to prepare the miniature slightly differently because of all the markings on the plane. Masking is going to be a big part of this project. So I needed to work kind of backwards, really, and work out which bits I needed to mask first. Um, so I've got two planes to work on. Um, so you may well see one or the other at different points if they look different throughout the, the tutorial because I'll be working on both because as I said it's part of a commission um, but do forgive me for that. So on to some of the tools of the trade. So I've got three types of masking here. I've got some standard yellow masking tape. I've got some thinner white masking tape which is designed to go around bended surfaces and I have some Vallejo liquid mask. Now I'm going to make use of all of these uh, for masking this plane off. But before I can do any masking, I need to do the first bit of painting and I want to mask off the black stripes first. And I've got a black miniature, so rather than paint the black in afterwards, it's easy to start with. And I'm just going to highlight that black slightly with a grey and I'm using scale 75 graphite grey. So I'm just lightly highlighting the top of the miniature where the black stripes will be on the tail and then on the wings. So now we can get back to that masking um, and, I, and I need to do some fairly thin stripes. Now there's two ways I could do it. I could cut the yellow down, which means I could end up with a jagged line. But this white tape actually is almost exactly the right um, width that I need. So I'm going to go with this as is and it's also designed to be slightly stretchy and bend on curved surfaces. So I think it will work very well for this job in hand. So I'm just stretching a few bits out onto my cutting mat trimming off with the blade it means that rather than trying to roll it from the tape um, you can cut off strips to the size that you need now it's a matter of just placing these on and you can you can peel them on and off again they still retain their stickiness so it's a matter of kind of eyeballing it a little bit and readjusting and readjusting. You can see I'm using the blade there a little bit to sort of take control of it. Slowly bend it round and then re readjust and uh, just got to play around with it really until you, until you get it right. You want to make sure the lines are as straight as possible. Um, they'll never be 100% perfect. Obviously the more time you take, the more accurate it will be. And there it is with the, the first white bits on. So those white bits are where the black stripes will be underneath. And you have to think about working reverse here or you can get yourself into a little bit of a pickle. So next up, I'm going to use some Vallejo liquid mask. This stuff is absolutely fantastic and I use it more than any other sort of masking. Um, it is a liquid. It does run. So you have to be careful how you use it. And you'll notice there I'm using a rubber clay shaper. 
you can apply this with a brush, but as soon as you've dipped your bristles in, really, they dry very, very quickly, and you and you ruin that brush, which is fine. It's an old one, um, but you go through them like like you wouldn't believe. So I've just used the uh, the fine point of a rubber clay shaper, and you can just wipe it off. And if you forget to wipe it off, it just peels off at the end because obviously it's just masking fluid. So once it does dry, it goes a lot darker, becomes a dull green, so it's harder to see, especially when you've got layers of paint over it. So you do need to try and keep your fingers off it as much as possible, um, but it is brilliant stuff. Now what I'm doing here is just masking in the window area, so there's no separate canopy here. Um, it's not a sort of scale model, and I want to leave the canopy basically black on a miniature like this. I'm not trying to try paint in any cartoon-esque glass. We'll just leave it at a, at a mostly black effect, just like the studio paint job. Now, I'm painting over a curved area here as well with this stuff, so I'm just doing very thin layers, otherwise it will run down over the fuselage. So here I'm using scale color graphene gray um, and I'm going to use that to, to paint in the areas underneath where the white's going to go. This is also the gray I'm going to use on the bottom of the plane as well, um, but I'll come back to that stage later. What I want to do here is just give a bit of a light gray base before I apply the white areas. Um, they would go over the black, but this will give it a smoother finish. Now I've allowed the grey to go over the rest of the whole miniature, so this isn't quite a zenithal, but it does give me a light dusting, which will mean that the colours that go on afterwards will go on much smoother. Now for those white stripes, I'm going to use Game Air Dead White. Um, this and Model Colour um, Off White um, Air go through the airbrush very, very well, very, very smoothly. Um, and sometimes white can be a little problematic through the airbrush, can be a little bit chalky and, and block up, but I find these two very, very good. So just building up lots of layers so there's no pooling and you get a nice, quite sort of fresh and flat white coat. Now that that white has dried, I need to protect that. So this is building up more masking layers. We're leaving the original layers on just to protect it. I can cover the white and the previous layers at the same time. And I'm just going to use the thicker masking tape for this. So eyeballing it here a bit, just trying to carry over from the edge of the, the last stripe, a similar width to cover the white areas. And you end up with this plane looking like it's got plasters all over, but that's now covered the black and the white stripes, meaning that it's now well protected to put down the colour. Now back to that graphene grey, and I'm now going to paint the bottom of the plane. So we'll flick it over, and with the airbrush I want to give it a fairly even coat of this light grey. I'm not quite so worried about building up panels. The detail is very shallow in this miniature. Um, I will get the detail back with some oil washes later. Now, for the grey on the top, I'm going to be using Warfront, which is scale 75's sort of Second World War range, Ocean Grey. Uh, I chose to go with the grey first. I could have gone with the green first. I thought the grey would cover the white and grey that I already have on there nicer, and I thought the green is more likely to go over the grey, but you could do it either way around. So now what we essentially have is the stripes painted and protected, the canopy protected, a little bit of uh, masking on the nose as well, which is hard to see, uh, and then two greys. So the one grey over the top um, and one grey on the bottom of the plane. I'm now going to use some liquid mask to paint in the camouflage markings. Now you could use putty for this. They do some very nice masking putties out there. Um, I find that if I don't go too thick with this stuff, I can almost paint in where I want the camouflage and you'll see that kind of progress. And I'm using the reference pictures I found as a way of building in the camouflage markings. Now remembering what you're covering is the colour that remains. So if you want to completely copy an image you found on the internet, 
there, you want to copy the area in that you don't want covered, so to speak. And there we go. You can see it's starting to dry as it goes out to kind of darker colour and you can see the camouflage marks that I've put on there. Now for the green. So I'm going to use model colour US Olive Drab. This seems to be the closest match to the Olive Drab that it was recommended on one of the reference materials I found. Um, and it looks pretty close to it. Um, so again, um, it's a nice steady coat basically over the grey areas that are showing on the top of the plane. I'm doing my best to keep the plane at an angle where I don't get the green on the lighter grey underneath, which I'd, I want to stay clean. Now you could mask off the bottom, um, but if you're confident that you've got enough control over your airbrush and at the angle you hold it, you, you can get away without doing that, but you do need to be careful. Now's the fun part when you remove the masking. Now the rubber masking, the masking fluid itself, you can rub it off with your thumb like that and it starts to peel away. And then as soon as you've got a few bits off, you can stick them together in a ball and actually use it to help drag off some of the other masking, especially in hard to reach areas like in between the um, the rims on the, the canopy, that kind of thing. Now once all of the, the, the ball um, and once all the rubber masking is off, I can start peeling away at the, the tape masking. And there we go. So the masking's off. On to the next stage. It's some more of that olive drab. And what I'm doing here is hand painting in the bombs. And it took me a little while to find, find the colour. I thought they might be... Um, the same colour as the as the the olive drab colour seems to be fairly standard for a lot of ordnance and some and, and munitions, so to speak. Um, and a few, I found a few pictures that, that, that they were this kind of green, so I've, I've used the same to paint the little on the bottom. And the first and only contrast colour, I think, um, using on this plane, which is a, which is a surprise, I'm using some contrast Nasdrag yellow, just on the nose tip. So the, the reference from the um, the studio paint job is, is a yellow nose tip, and it just gives a nice sort of rich base to build up. I'm going to highlight with two other yellows afterwards anyway. So the first highlight is a base Avalanche Sunset, and that's also a Citadel colour. Citadel do very good yellows with very, very good coverage. So not only am I going to paint the, the tip and highlight there, there's also some yellow markings at the front of the wings. I've just marked the extremities there, and I'm going to paint a little line neatly between the two points. And here I am just gently providing a bit of a highlight and tidying up the uh, the nose tip. Then the top highlight is Citadel colour again and this is Phalanx yellow. So again I'm just going to gently highlight a little bit on the front of those wing tips and then the same on the top of the nose. Now I'm just using some Game Air Black just to do a bit of a tidy up where the masking on the top of the canopy isn't exact. Um, it just needs a little bit of tidying up of those edges. So it's just a thin edge to paint around the canopies on both planes. So now using some scale 75 decayed metal, I'm just painting in, and are these the exhausts? I don't, someone who knows more about um, aeroplanes, please put in the comments. Usually, you guys are usually awesome at doing that for me when I don't know the name of something. Um, so just painting those in with this decayed metal, and they will have a slight highlight of some silver later on, but in, in all the images I saw, there was more of a sort of a, a darker brownish kind of color rather than a bright silver.
And there we are with a quite a neat plane so far. No weathering, no decals, um, but you could easily game with this. And I usually have a, a jump off point in my painting videos. And I suppose that is the closest that this will, will get to that. Um, it definitely looks better with the decals on and definitely looks better with weathering. So we'll move on to those stages next. So here are the decals that come with the miniatures. I'm not going to give a full tutorial on how to do decals. Um, I'll pop a little link in now. I've got a very short video which will explain that much better and it just cuts this, the length of this video down a little bit. But essentially I'm applying the whole miniature with a gloss varnish. Not only does it to protect it for future weathering, it also helps you apply decals to a smooth surface. And then I'm using Microsole and Microset. And um, the Microset helps set so that's one the blue label helps set the decal to the miniature first and then the microsole almost helps melt it down and takes away the edge so you don't see that the, it looks like it's painted on rather than looks like a sticker and um, those two things are absolutely brilliant and if you mix that with the, the the gloss varnish afterwards you can get a very good effect now these weren't the best decals i've ever worked with um, they tore very easily didn't come off the backing um, some decals are brilliant some aren't um, and these were we're in the kind of okay level um, but the odd little tear and things isn't too bad because you turn those into battle damage anyway you'll notice I've got behind a, a tray with the decals on with a bit of paper just to stop them floating around with water in there um, and I just peel them off with a brush or, or bring the whole paper over and, and slide them over but it's the micro um, solemn micro set that really do the magic here now once those decals have set uh, and you want to give them, leave them a good few hours to do that overnight if possible, um, you want to apply a protection to them and again that's just a further gloss coat. I didn't cover the whole model uh, but I aimed at the areas where the decals were, that protects them. Now onto the weathering, uh, my favourite um, oil wash at the moment, this is Soilworks by Skeleton Divide and this is Grease, so I've been using all my Flames of War tanks um, and what I'm doing here um, with an old brush is essentially panel lining but on such a small miniature I end up almost covering the whole miniature which is cool because I'm going to wipe an awful lot of it if not most of it away afterwards with a clean brush. The joys of oil washes are they don't dry straight away when they pull you can wipe them off um, unlike something like a uh, Agrax Earthshade which pulls and dries quite quickly and are left with tide marks you can reactivate um, oils for even a couple of days afterwards until you seal them um, and just by applying some white spirit afterwards uh, and you'll see that coming up next. So here I am with the artist's white spirit. You don't want to use standard stuff. It's, it's a little bit harsher and very smelly. This stuff is low odour. Um, and with a cotton bug or a Q-tip, um, I believe they call it in America, um, and with another brush and a little lid full of clean white spirit, I can go back over and wipe away a lot of the oils I've placed on the miniature. Now here I'm doing them deliberately in a direction of flight. Um, or reverse direction there you see me do but the idea is that the lines are going in one direction so that any sort of if they're flying through weather or any dirt and grime you think would go in a, in a certain direction just slowly working away at it a little bit more so if I see a line I want to put a cleaner line in you provide it it gives you a really nice sort of streaking effect so I wait for it to dry a little bit get another clean cotton bud and go back to it as well and by this stage I'm using a brush because it gives you a little bit more control so again dipping that in the artist white spirit um, and streaking away and any pools you can go in and almost paint away and blend it in and, and just generally remove the muddy mess leaving the oil wash ingrained in all the little panel lines where they are and where dirt might build up Now at this stage I'm actually putting some lines back in, same thing again, I've got clean white spirit open in another lid as well, and I'm just where I want to draw in some slightly more defined lines and streaks, so I'll dip them in the edge of the, the paint where it's uh, the oil paint that is, where it's a little bit drier, streak them on and then using clean white spirit, um, dry them off a little bit on a paper towel you can see just out of shot and just smooth those out and feather those out so it just gives me a little bit more control and you could if you go wrong you can just wipe the whole thing off again and start again now 
Now, once it's fully dry here, again, overnight, if possible, um, you want to get rid of that shine. And I'm going to use some matte varnish and again, through the airbrush here. I'm deliberately trying not to get too close to the canopy. I'm not going to worry if I sort of go over it a little bit there, but I want to leave a little bit of shine where the glass will be. But I do want to take most of it off the wings. We're on to our final stages of weathering now. So this is some Rhinox hide um, and I'm going to be using this with some sponge there and some tweezers to do some sponge chipping. And it's my favourite colour for sponge chipping. So you get a bit of paint on the, on the sponge, dot it off on a clean paper towel until there's not much left and then just give a few little dots here and there and that could be dirt, it could be where the paint has chipped off, it could be anything but it definitely looks good and makes it a little, little bit more realistic. Um, this plane's been on many sorties and, um, and and it's been a while since it's had it had its uh, paint job so we want to reflect that in the paint job slightly. Time for some more sponge chipping, this time it's Game Air Silver. Uh, again, I don't do this too much on miniatures of this scale, um, not too much on tanks of the silver, um, but for the aircraft I thought it might define it a little bit more. Um, I like the idea of it flying through some, some you know, debris of things. Um, it may be not very realistic, but it certainly looks good, so I'm just adding uh, a few sponge chips here and there. And then a little bit of further definition, almost going off camera here, my apologies. I'm very lightly dry brushing that same silver. Um, so picking out the, the exhaust panels I talked about earlier, the odd gently, the little edges of the, the, the front of the canopy there, and just little edges on the wings and things. It just gives you a little bit of definition. Shows, like I said, where it might be sort of flying into into to, to debris and things at time. Maybe it's been under fire. Um, but uh, it just really brings out the definition of the model. Now the very final stage, I'm using the airbrush again. I'm using a little bit of contrast Garak Sewer, which is a kind of grimy, oily colour. Um, and I just wanted to kind of build a little bit of um, definition that almost looked like some, some sort of fumes coming away from the engine, almost like exhaust, and oil and things. Um, again, I don't know how accurate this would be. Um, it might be something that I, I've picked up and a bad habit I've picked up from painting some science fiction sort of style miniatures and things. But I definitely like the effect that it does afterwards. So um, even if it's uh, not 100% accurate, um, I do think it looks, looks quite cool. Um, and a little bit of extra wear and, and tear and dirt from the, from the aircraft. As I imagine it's sort of diving down to bomb. Um, and those sort of those oils and things and, and um, exhaust flumes and, and, and carbon and things that may well come out um, of building up around the, the sort of the front of the, the nose of the plane. And there we are, all finished. Um, I think they look pretty cool for, for planes of this size and plenty good enough for war gaming. Um, and those of you who are military modelers for aeroplanes and things, there'll be lots of things I probably haven't done that um, maybe would have done if they were uh, for a sort of display model kit but um, I'm pretty happy with them for gaming pieces and uh, I sent pictures to the client and he's pretty happy as well um, hopefully he doesn't lose them like he has done with previous models um, regardless they were loads of fun to do and it didn't take too long it took me about um, a, a day's work in, in, in total to be honest with you um, a little bit longer than I expected I was thinking about five or six hours it was probably more like more like seven hours but maybe I slowed slightly by uh, having to press record on the camera and things a few times well I hope you found the video useful I hope you found it interesting and, and entertaining um, and I hope you found some techniques that you might be able to use yourself should you wish to do so a lot of those techniques work very well on tanks and things as well um, there are you know a few imperfections here and there um, but take of it what you want very interested to hear what you think in the comments um, how have you got on painting your own planes for flames of war or just in general for for, for military modeling for hobby airfix kits etc etc um, do you like painting them if you are new to the channel, please do check out the other videos. There are quite a few now, including lots of other Flames of War, if that's what attracted you to the, um, the, the channel in the first place or to the video. There are plenty of um, tutorials and videos around epic battles, Napoleonics and American Civil War. There's some Middle Earth stuff and a smattering of other things as well, so there may well be something that takes your fancy. Um, so please do check them out. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, take care, and I'll catch you soon.